Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute. Sorry I haven't uploaded. Um, for the past few weeks I had been working on schoolwork and now I'm on my like two week break before my final semester. So now I have a little bit more time to make videos. Uh, so yeah, I apologize for that, but uh, here's this week's video. So uh, the other day, when I'm filming this, it's the 31st of, or no, is it the 31st? It is the 31st. It's the 31st of July. And so the end of the month, hooray. But also uh, the day before that, Saturday, um, which was the 30th, I went to a convention called Midsummer Scream. And, uh, you know, I went, I bought a few things. And so yeah, I'm gonna show you a few things that I got from the convention, as well as talk about whether Midsummer Scream is worth going to or not, because I do have a few complaints about the convention and I figure you guys might wanna hear them. So stick around and find out my opinions. <laughs> But before you do that, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this dear old channel because you like watching my shit, so subscribe to it. <laughs> okay, so I didn't get much at this convention because although there were a lot of vendors, there were not many new vendors um, that like I hadn't already bought from, but I will show you the stuff that I did get. So I think my... The first thing I'm going to show you are these two pins I got, which are of Hatchet Face and Nadja from What We Do in the Shadows, and then Hatchet Face from Crybaby uh, from Demonic Pin Festation. Uh, I have a pin from this brand of Tracy Lord from Crybaby um, that I had gotten from Mystic Museum a few months ago. And I had no clue that they sold one of Hatchet Face, and she is one of my favorite characters in one of my favorite movies, Crybaby. So when I saw this pin, I knew I just had to get it. And it's, it's so wonderful and captures the character so well. And then they actually sold a set of all three of the um, vampires from What We Do in the Shadows, so Nandor, Laszlo, and Nadja. But because I am an absolute Nadja lover and I, I love her so much, I had to at least get this one pin um, because just look at her. Like, look, I, I adore her. She's just amazing. She will go on my pin jacket along with Hatchet Face. And I'm just so happy with these. I love those two characters so, so much, and I'm so glad I could get my hands on those pens. Next thing is the Hellfire Liquid Lipstick from Horror Lashes. Now, me and my family have been shopping from uh, this brand for a little bit, I believe for the past two years since we started going to horror conventions in the Southern California area. Um, the person who runs this brand is such a sweetheart. Um, literally every single time we see her she just is so wonderful and so i had to get my hands on this because not only it does like i really love the like packaging and like it's hellfire but with the hellfire liquid lip you got a little exclusive print ah, it's eddie it's eddie it's it's finally my year i can feel it it's just it just is so good. So this is gonna go on my bookshelf with like the rest of my stuff because like it's just such a good, it's such a good little print. It also uh, on the back of the print actually tells you like how to apply the lipstick, um, all that stuff and which is really nice. Like also look at the design on the back. Like it's so nice. But yeah, I love this print so much. So I'm gonna Okay, so let's unbox this liquid lip because I want to show you guys what it looks like out of the box. So we're just gonna slide. Ta da! Look, and then on the bottle, there's the little symbol from the Hellfire Club. It almost matches my hair. 
that's actually kind of neat but yeah i'm just i'm so 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 happy with this it's gonna go in my ever-growing collection of red lipsticks and stuff because i basically collect the color red like i have so many here i'll give you a swatch even though i'm horrible at this okay so hopefully i can maneuver this correct look at that damn that is just like look at how pretty that is that is literally i shit you not that is basically the same shade of red as my hair it was truly meant to be but yeah apparently this does dry down matte so that should be nice that's i actually really love the fact that it dries down matte but it applies like very soft so that's really cool so yeah that's another one of the things i got i highly recommend checking out for lashes when you get the chance she is a wonderful brand and just has a bunch of awesome stuff um their eyeshadows are great the eyelashes are great and yeah just highly recommend highly recommend checking horror lashes out uh, i'll leave their instagram in the description below <laughs> One of the final things I got is technically downstairs, <laughs> but um, there is a brand of like bakery that I really love named Deadly Sweets. Uh, I am not a cake person, like at all. I hate like most cupcakes and things like that because I'm very specific with like texture, especially when it comes to cake. It can't be too dense, it can't be too soft. It has to be like the right amount of bounce and density it, it has to be perfect this brand deadly sweets is so good now i did not get a cake from them this time around when i saw them but i did get a um i believe it's called the s'mores crunch i'll show a picture here um but they had four different flavors and i just chose the og evil which is like their original s'mores flavor um in editing, I'll do a description of what it tasted like here, so I'll do that. Okay, I think that was enough time for future me to um, do that little review. Alright, now time for my thoughts and opinions on Midsummer Scream. Now, I do not mean any hate to Midsummer Scream or any of the like people involved. Um, this is mainly just like my thoughts on how I felt at this convention. So yeah, just take what I say with a grain of salt. First off, I do not think this convention was very accessibility friendly. Um, there was so many, I mean, so many stairs at this convention and to get to the vendors hall you had to go down an escalator um and it was just and there was like one elevator to go down to the vendors hall and then one elevator to go up to where the after party would be which i will talk about the after party in a few minutes it was incredibly crowded and there was no crowd control at all like I didn't see one like staff member trying to like make sure that people were not blocking the road. It got super dense and super in some areas. It was just a, really a mess and it was it felt very unorganized, which really sucks. One of my biggest issues with this convention was the after party. This after party was a paid event. You had to pay to go to this after party. So the after party has a theme and the theme of the after party was deadly disco. Now, when I go to a party that is themed, I would expect the music to also be themed around deadly disco, right? First off, when it came down to the after party, they made everyone who was going to the after party wait outside for an hour um, before even letting us any of us in. And when they did let us in, they didn't even let us up to the after party yet. They all made us wait at two different uh, staircases. Um, 
before letting us in. And then when they eventually let people upstairs, which again, a big accessibility issue, there's only one elevator from what I saw, um, they, it was literally a swarm of people from both sides of like the ele the stairs. And then they only opened up one door to let everybody into the ballroom. And that was like a really big thing for me. I felt like that was a safety hazard and just not good. <laughs> Next thing, there was like, they did not talk about the other events that were going on during this after party. Um, apparently there was a movie and a burlesque show that me and my family did not know that a, the burlesque show was even happening because nobody talked about it. We only heard about the movie through like somebody passing by when we were in line to go to the after party. Um, so they didn't talk much about the, the other events that were happening um, besides the actual party itself. So when you walked into the room, uh, all you would see is one thing of table tennis, one thing of air hockey, one thing of cornhole, and then like one big game of Jenga, and then like a few tables. And then otherwise the room was barren. They had like a few chairs along the walls. It was just like barren, nothing else. They had a small, dance floor that could barely fit the people who were on the dance floor uh and they had two disco balls hanging from the ceiling that looked like they were bought from party city um and they were spinning in different directions which made me feel incredibly dizzy um as well as they had extreme flashing lights and they had no warnings and i do not think they even put warnings on the after party like listing so that was a little bit dangerous for some people who could have like you know medical issues involving lights uh i think one of my biggest issues came from the fact that this party was themed deadly disco and they did not even play that many disco songs i walked into that room and the first thing i heard was reggaeton which don't get me wrong, reggaeton is a great genre and you know, it, it's great. But when you're going into a freaking party that is themed after disco, you would expect to hear disco, right? I did not hear much disco that night. I heard maybe four disco songs, one of them being about Damn Time by Lizzo. Otherwise, um, this uh, party was DJed by the, I guess, music group Lovecraft. They just kept playing a lot of their own remixes to songs, which one of them being a Spooky Scary Skeletons remix that is not that good and sounds like Kids Bop. Um, I'll insert it here. Spooky Scary Skeletons and Shivers Down the Spine. And then otherwise, like, it, the DJ was not super interactive with the crowd. When I think about a DJ, I think about uh, somebody who's, like, making music and trying to hype up the crowd. They were doing a very poor job at that. I saw mostly people just standing around waiting for something better. Yeah, so the party was just very lame and it felt like the DJ just apparently did not know what disco was and wouldn't put on disco music. Um, and don't even get me started on the mess that was the cosplay contest. Cause my God, the way they went about organizing it was incredibly messy and it was just it was bad and look i know that midsummer scream is a big like convention thing but they could do better and could have done a lot more organizing when it came to crowd control and making sure that there was accessibility and stuff like that but yeah, those are my complaints about Midsummer Scream. Other than though the things I've mentioned, it was a good convention. I don't think you would have to go multiple days to enjoy it though. I felt I feel like the one day that I did go was good enough. Um 
And I would not suggest buying a ticket to the after party because it was very lame and the DJ couldn't even stick to the goddamn freaking theme. So don't spend the money on the after party. That's my thoughts and stuff. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you liked it. See you in the next one. Bye.